Hi guys, Simon here, welcome to the channel. Broken part seven. Where do we leave it off? Martin and uh, Bar had arrived on Cosumet in the morning after spending a night on the mainland and uh, had found a, a, a nice hotel with the bamboo type hotel rooms, huts, uh, rooms right on the beach and uh, six seven hundred baht a night fan room no aircon basic but absolutely fine let's go back a little bit and talk about bar i've already mentioned bar in thailand or ba means crazy and she certainly was and is at the time of this story I estimate she was somewhere between 19 and 23 years old. She was about five foot five, very slim, attractive, and had been working in Patia for a good four years, maybe longer. So she, at a very young age, went to Patia. She came from, if my memory serves me right, uh, an area in Buriram, in a a small village and I believe she had a sister um, and uh, mother still alive I think the father still alive um, but working in Patia for all these years she used to go home on the odd occasion give money to the family or probably send money she was earning good money uh, back in those days a bar girl in a beer bar up on the top of second road would command uh, for a longer period of aerobics a thousand baht maybe 1500 and for uh, a shorter period of time 500 to a thousand baht and bar fines were 300 baht for those type of bars but the money added up especially if you had a lot of customers now like a lot of bar girls back then and this is sort of 99 2000 years things have changed a lot over the last 20 years in Patea uh, back then in that era there was a lot of scare and talk about HIV and AIDS um, and the bars oh, let's just say the girls used to go to a clinic get a ticket um, with very little checks done and the bars I believe had to keep that record of those we did we had the record of all the girls chitties and ID cards and stuff but back then again ID cards were obtainable quite easily with wrong dates on if you know what I mean also back then 20 years ago drugs are illegal in Thailand um, then now and in the future and there are heavy, heavy penalties for um, getting involved in those at all. But I refer to them through all these stories as um, uh, unusual substances. Let's just call it that. Many, many bar girls. Um, and I don't know if this is the same today. But let's, we're talking about that era. Many of them, if they worked in a go-go bar, would have a boyfriend, a Thai boyfriend, maybe... Um, a bouncer on the door, a doorman, or a taxi driver, motorcycle taxi driver, or some of the boys that were security in some ways or other, um, or even a DJ. But a lot of DJs were actually tomboys in that era. So the girls sometimes had the tomboy, so a girlfriend. And sometimes they had other girls in the bar that, as their girlfriends. So bar back then, after four or five years in Pattaya, had got the taste of alcohol uh, she was like many of the bar girls alcoholic you could say um, for the amount of hours they were drinking i know after two years managing a bar in patia i was becoming an alcoholic so the girls a lot of them were alcoholics and then after through the shifts or after the shifts if they worked in beer bars their boyfriends if they had them would be more than likely 
motorcycle taxi riders that are hanging around outside the bars on the road or girlfriends or as I say maybe DJs and things but they with quiet periods with no customers about the bars to G up the girls would put a bucket of ice put some whiskey in there and soda water and things and all the girls would drink out of it they'd all have their own straw and they'd drink out of that just to keep them in the right mood for customers who wanted a party but also in between times or after shifts the girls were addicted to those illegal substances where they got them boyfriends motorcycle taxi riders I don't know um, but they would go off and do this sort of thing and they another thing which mostly is illegal in Thailand is gambling and quite often 20 years ago there was lots of card games going on illegally and a lot of gambling so when you take one of those bar girls if she hadn't had a customer and she was a little bit depressed and she take those substances got a bit of gambling the girls mounted uh, 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 actually got themselves into um, quite a bit of debt sometimes the bar owners would lend them money but quite often it would be boys on bikes and various organizations lending them money so that caused some problems amongst them and then it pushed them harder to get customers to get money some girls turned into really quite evil girls Bar wasn't one of those evil girls she was just uh, as if she had a huge amount of energy and with whatever substance and drink and concoctions or, or cocktails she would be full of beans all the time um, but she was absolutely crazy she was just on a score of 0 to 10 of being so full on <laughs> she was a 10 um, and mood swings would be a common thing with her she spent a long time in Pattaya a, the lifespan of a girl working there could be from 18 17 years old till they're 30 so it's quite a, a long time they were on Samet uh, it was morning so they just went out and ate Martin liked Thai food he was getting the taste for it he could eat any of it any spice pretty quickly um, he was as I say quite slim and fit and uh, he was full of beans full of life they spent three or four days on Samet in the daytime on the beach drinking eating and at night they would party around the bars that were there and Martin as I said wasn't a cheap Charlie he would quite happily spend a lot of money on alcohol um, and uh, but he kept off he was keeping off spirits and things doctor's orders and he was staying on beer and he'd get drunk a jar a bar would get drunk as well um, and then back for aerobics they were pretty both of them pretty athletic so fun was had by both and after a few days they were uh, thought time to move on so they left the island and went further down the mainland and got a ferry across to Ko Chang probably the better of the two islands prettier beaches more life there more things to do and again they found a reasonable hotel with rooms that were close these were it was one a normal hotel so it was close to the beach you walk out the rooms and down past the pool and it was a little bit more money I think back then he would have paid about seven eight hundred baht um, and uh, fell in love with Ko Chang he did and later on in this love story Ko Chang plays a bigger part in his life they he was here for a month they he'd already had a week in Pattaya before Bar had come back and they're coming towards the end of the second week but they explored they rented a scooter they traveled all around um, Ko Chang over a period of about 10 days and had 
an absolutely great time. She wasn't misbehaving, she was getting drunk, but she wasn't getting leery or leery <laughs> or um, shouting and getting abusive. All she was doing was drinking. And Martin was falling for her. Absolutely head over heels. Um, and even though he knew that she had a temper and I warned him, he was falling for her. Uh, Ko Chang finished, so he's two and a half weeks into his holiday and they head back to Pattaya, get back and late afternoon and she said that she's going to go back to her room, get her clothes washed, get some other clothes. He checked into that hotel again he had in Scow Beach and uh, they agreed to meet and he's already paid the bar fine for her, um, they agreed to meet just along Second Road between her bar and Scow Beach somewhere for food um, in a few hours later on and in that gap he came down to my bar and uh, caught up with me, told me everything that's gone on and I was very surprised that she hadn't gone crazy on him on that trip and she'd been well behaved. I was very surprised, but I wasn't surprised to hear him say that he's fallen for her. I mean, that was just uh, the way it was. I could see it happening. He'd already made indications of that. Bless. But I still, again, gave him a bit of a warning and uh, he didn't listen. Of course not. No one ever listens to advice. <laughs> a bit later, he said, I'm off, I'm going to go and see her, and we're going to have a wander around, and off they went. Next morning, um, they'd had the evening together, he came down to uh, my bar quite early, and again, it was about 10 o'clock. I wasn't up till 10, 11 o'clock most mornings, but lucky I was up that morning. Um, and he came down, we had a coffee in my bar, and uh, he said how great night he'd had, and that he wasn't going to uh, pay her bar. He was just going to spend the next week and a half going to a bar. It's going to cost him more in the end for drinks and stuff. He'd have been better off because he'd be buying her mate's drinks in the bar. But he wouldn't listen. I gave him some more advice. Uh, we went off for breakfast. Quite often we go to Greg's Kitchen up on Second Road. But a few doors up was a, a cafe um, called, I think it was Only Fools and Horses. And we went there and had breakfast and that was good and then he said that he was just gonna wander around in the daytimes go to the beach get massages maybe pop to soy six and then spend the evenings with her through the night uh, in her bar fair enough off he went and i didn't hear from him for about three days um nothing at all and then he got what six days left he turns up at about two in the afternoon and says to me that uh, he'd had a bit of a bust up with bar she'd got drunk in the in in the bar at night and before um and that she walked out disappeared for a couple of hours and then come back even more um drunk if it was drunk or in a crazy mood and they'd had a bust up um, and he just like she's absolutely potty he, he said but he really really likes her she hadn't got violent she just stood up and shouting at him in front of everyone in the bar and uh, just screaming at him at the top of her voice for doing nothing apparently <sighs> bless and I said to him, look, you know, she's volatile. Yeah, she's just like like a volcano, ready to go off at any point. And we chatted about it, but it didn't make any difference. He said he was going back to make up with her that evening. Okay, and off he went. It went quiet again. I didn't hear from him for another four days, maybe. And eventually caught up with him and all everything was great they sorted everything out and 
all happy and they'd been having lots of aerobics, all good. And it was time for him to go home. He was uh, contemplating changing his ticket and staying longer, but he had to uh, get back. Um, this time he'd sat down with Barr and emails and worked it all out how they would communicate and they would communicate he said um, so all good even though she was staying working in the bar uh, he was happy with that fine with that knowing that she was going to go with other customers didn't seem to phase him and that was it holiday end we said our goodbyes off he went flew home hmm no cliffhanger, nothing to, to keep you hanging this time. He really had fallen for her. And I, I'm just, to this day, I still can't fathom what the attraction was. Okay, she was a pretty girl, but she was, she was trouble. She really was trouble. Hmm. But he was back, he was going to work for six months back in the UK. And about three months later, he rang me up from the UK. And I was totally gobsmacked and shocked that he'd rung up. And I'm nice to hear from you and all the niceties. And he said, I've got a problem. And I said, okay what sort of problem and he said bar and i said uh, i remember saying i said oh what's she done now um and he said she'd been arrested um and uh, not locked up but she'd had to pay a fine something like twenty thousand baht, which is a lot and she needed him to send her a bit of money and he was happy to he said he said, but that's not it. So I walked him through a way of getting money to me. And then I said that I would go and, uh, or she could, he could send her to the bar and collect it. Um, and that's what ended up happening. He said, but that's not it. I said, oh, so she's been caught for some sort of uh, substances, possession, not selling, just possession. And there's more than that, and yes, he said. So maybe there is a cliffhanger coming. He said she's pregnant. Catch you on the next one, guys. Bye for now.